How do you get your kids to eat at least somewhat healthy? I've got two kids of my own, and let me tell you, I know that it can be challenging. So we're going to dive into all that. Strap in for episode 249. Let's go. The future of fitness. How do you gain muscle mass? Fitness is not complicated. It's simple when you break it down. There's so much information out there. No fads, no diets, just plain simple habits. You're listening to the Bones to Bulk podcast. Hey, welcome to today's episode. My name is Brian Purdy, and I will be your host today. And if this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the show. I am so glad to have you here from our return listeners. Thank you for coming back. It means the world to me that you continue to tune in. If you have not checked out our YouTube channel, head on over right now. Well, unless you're driving to youtube.com forward slash bones to bulk, subscribe to the channel, check out some of the videos on there. I'd be greatly appreciative of that. With that being said, let's dive in. So I have two kids. I have a eight-year-old and a four-year-old. And let me tell you, getting kids to eat healthy can be freaking challenging. Am I right? If you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. So how do you structure their eating habits to where they're not just eating junk all day? Well, first off, I got to tell you, it's going to take time, just like it takes time for you to readjust what you eat and to adjust how you eat and how you think about food. It's the same with your children. So first thing is have patience and go slow. The second thing is model by example. They're not going to do something if you're not doing it. So don't expect them to eat their veggies if you're not eating your veggies. Don't expect them to eat a healthy meal if you're not eating a healthy meal. So you've got to model the expectation. There are going to be some things that they just will not eat. They cannot stand. There is a difference, though, between those things and between things that they just don't want to eat because it may not be sugar-filled. So most kids' foods, regardless of what it is, is packed with sugar. You ever looked at those Go-Gurt packages? Pure sugar. There's no yogurt in that. I don't know what yogurt they're finding in there, but that is pure sugar. Anything that's packaged for kids is loaded, loaded with sugar, which is why kids younger and younger are getting diabetes because there is so much freaking sugar and stuff. So while I don't recommend cutting out all sugar, I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's awesome, but they are still kids and I don't want my children to be in therapy someday saying my dad never let me have ice cream or a happy meal from McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? We do do those things with our kids. However, they are the exception and not the rule. So find some things they like. All kids are going to gravitate towards some things. I'll give you, for example, my kids, they hate like any kind of stir fry. If it's got veggies in it, chicken over rice, they will not touch it. I get it. That's just one of those things. It's a no go for them. So what do we do instead? We make them something different on those nights. I'll cook up some chicken for them. I'll make them a side that they do like, and then some veggies on the side. So they're still eating a healthy meal. They're still eating pretty much the same food. I'm not having to cook them a special meal. I'm still cooking chicken for the stir fry. I'm still cooking veggies for the stir fry. I'm just cooking those separately. And maybe I'm making just one additional side of something that they'll enjoy. Another thing is sit down and talk with them. Now, it depends on their age. If they're three, four years old, they're probably not going to understand your conversation with them about, hey, we're deciding to get healthy for X, Y, Z. They're just going to be like, why the crap did you throw away my candy? You know what I'm saying? But with older kids, you can definitely have that conversation. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with my oldest daughter about just is this healthy? Is this not healthy? You know, she'll read ingredient labels on different foods. And I didn't teach her that. She just has seen me doing that. And so she naturally does it. And I've explained to her, you know, because she'll look at calories and she'll be like, oh, this has this many calories and this has this many calories. And I tell her, don't worry about calories because you are a child and you do not need to worry about that. And that is the truth. I don't want my child becoming obsessed with calories because they don't need to worry about that at eight, nine years old. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you don't want to make them hyper aware, but you want them to have knowledge. There's a lot of days when my daughter will come to me. And again, I this is not something that's happens all the time. And this is not something that happened overnight. This has taken years, but she'll come to me and say, Hey, you know what? I think I've already had some unhealthy snacks today. I want to have a healthy snack after dinner. I'm like, wow, you're actually picking up what I'm saying and teaching them. Hey, you know, you need to pair proteins with carbohydrates and these are healthy carbohydrates and these are not healthy carbohydrates. And this is why, and have the conversation, have the dialogue so that you're educating them. You're teaching them. Kids love to learn new things. So take the opportunity to explain to them what's going on. Don't explain 
expect them to just blindly follow because we wouldn't do that. So let's not expect that of them. And it's going to be an adjustment just like it is for you. It's going to be an adjustment for them. So don't expect again for them just to be all on board, especially if you have like teenagers who are way more picky sometimes, like don't expect change to happen overnight. This is a process. You got to be patient with them. But again, you've got to model it. And so, you know, set it up where you cook a meal together, you know, pull up some recipes on Pinterest or side note, I love Pinterest. Okay. I may be weird about that, but like, oh my gosh, there's so much cool stuff on there. I'm a big like home do it yourselfer. Like I just remodeled both mine and my wife's offices, built a new desk, put up new trim. Like I love doing stuff like that. Anyway, that's a side note. My point is there's a lot of great recipes on Pinterest. Have them pick out some, like look up some healthy recipes. And especially if they're older, you know, have them pick out some that look good to them. Like, hey, how does this look? Hey, how does this look? That way you can begin to create some new healthy meals that they enjoy. My kids love tacos and we make healthy tacos. I've talked about that before. Get some ground turkey, get some black beans, serve it over lettuce. A few chips is fine. Just don't go crazy with them. Uh, then a little cheese, a little sour cream, a little sauce on top, and they're happy. They love that. So, you know, it doesn't have to be like, oh, you got to eat chicken, broccoli, and rice three times a day. No, of course they're going to want variety. Now, snacks is really hard with children. And this is, I feel like my kids do really well with meals. Um, and some weeks we suffer with the snacks. I'm going to be 100% honest. Like, it's not always easy getting the snacks on point. So here's kind of my rule of thumb with how snacks work. And again, this is not verbatim, you have to follow this, but this is just kind of how I do it. So during the week, I typically have things like fruit and maybe some pretzels or some fruit and some cheese sticks, um, some fruit and some baked Cheez-Its. No, Cheez-Its aren't healthy. I'm not trying to say they are, but at least it's not sugar. Um, and so that's kind of their nightly snack. They'll have, you know, an apple and some pretzels. They'll have an apple and a cheese stick. So that's kind of what I give them. It still satisfies that sweet tooth for them because the fruit is sweet and they really enjoy those things. Now, usually on the weekends, they get to have sweets. So whether it's ice cream, whether it's cookies, they're having that for their snack. And then usually once during the week, I'll also give them something a little bit sweet at nighttime or in the afternoon as a snack. So they're still getting some, they're not feeling like they're deprived and they never get to have anything, but it's limited. It's not an everyday thing. So they're not developing that craving that they've got to have sweets every day. Another thing, and people say I'm crazy for this, but whatever. My oldest is eight and a half and she has never tasted soda. That's right, <laughs> she has not tasted soda. Crazy, right? But it's definitely doable. You know, they, man, they adapt so quickly. We don't drink soda at all in our house. And it's just one of those no-goes for us. So our, our kids don't. Uh, when we go out to a restaurant or something, rather than a soda, they get a lemonade. That's a treat for them. And that brings me to my next thing, juice. Holy crap. No, just because you're buying 100% real fruit juice does not mean it's healthy for your child. Stop with the freaking juice. Like sugar haven. Okay. There is so much sugar in juice. And you're like, well, what's the difference between fruit? You give them fruit. Here's the big difference. Fruit is loaded with water. It's loaded with fiber. So your body digests it very slowly. So that sugar doesn't just hit the liver all at once and give that sugar rush. Whereas juice will, because there's no water content, there's no fiber in it to slow the absorption. So it hits the bloodstream right away. And yeah, diabetes, here we come. So get away from the juice and don't give me that bull crap about my kids won't drink anything but juice. Really? I'm pretty sure if they get thirsty enough, they're going to drink water. And you can flavor the water. Squeeze some lime in it. Squeeze some lemon in it. My kids love sparkling water. They don't drink that all the time, but that's a treat for them. My youngest calls it spicy. She'll take a sip and be like, oh, it's spicy. I like it. Uh, my oldest doesn't really care for it. So, you know, your kid may like it, they may not, but my kids down some freaking water. And so do my wife and I. Water is our number one go-to. We don't really ever have anything in the house other than water and milk and some alcohol, but, you know, they're not getting that. <laughs> so, again, water, water, water. You've got to teach them the water skills. You've got to show them, hey, it's healthy to drink water and we're going to drink water. I'm not saying they can never have juice. Like if my kids go to a birthday party. Yeah, they have cake. They have the Capri Sun crap that is there. I'm not, like I said, I don't want my kids in therapy one day, <laughs> but you've got to restrict it. You've got to draw the line. And remember, you're the parent. I see so many times 
People are like, well, my kid just won't eat anything except Happy Meals. Really? Have you ever tried not giving them that and making them something healthy? And when they get hungry, it's there for them to eat. I guarantee you eventually they're going to eat that. But that's where you've got to step in and you've got to be strong and say, no, I'm not going to cave. Don't give in to the puppy eyes. You're doing this for their benefit. That's what you've got to remember. You do all these other things to keep them safe. You make sure they're in a car. You make sure they wear their helmet. You make sure they're not by themselves where they shouldn't be. Like you do all these things to keep them safe. But we're missing the main thing of keeping them safe, which is their health. We all know as adults how important health is. So why not teach them that at a young age to where they can grow up with it rather than having to relearn it all as an adult? Because that sucks. So I hope this gives you some good advice. I get heated with this. Woo. Hope it gives you some good ideas for how to start getting your kids to eat healthier. It is a process, so take your time with it. Don't try to brush all in. Explain to them. Take it slow. But build those healthy habits now. If you found this helpful, another thing you can do that would be so, so, so appreciative, go to iTunes and leave us a review, an honest review about what you think about the show. Even if you don't listen on iTunes, just log in, leave us a review. That goes so far in the podcasting world, and I would really, really appreciate that. With that being said, remember, no matter what you're coming up against, what things you're facing, you can accomplish any goal you set your mind to. You've got this. Bye.